No doubt many of you will remember that uh, it was a popular movie about 2002. It was entitled My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And do you remember the father of the bride, who's sort of a proud traditionalist, as I recall? But you remember there, there are two particular things that seem unique to him that uh, I thought was hilarious. Uh, and I think most people did. And the first thing was that this gentleman thought, truly believed, that everything could be cured by Windex. Windex. And the second thing that he believed with all his heart was that all, all language, regardless of the language, everything found its root in Greek. Didn't matter what, every word, anywhere, everywhere was found in Greek. Well, today, the gospel theme is forgiveness. And the Greek word for forgiveness is aphemi which literally means to release from one's grasp. To release from one's grasp. Like releasing a small bird from the cup of your hands. To release from one's grasp, to forgive. The brilliant New Testament scholar Raymond Brown offers still another understanding of the word forgiveness, and he suggests it means simply to end a debt. Just as a debt can be forgiven or canceled, the offense of others can be canceled or ended, suggests Brown. And I think the best of all, Rollo May, who is a psychiatrist slash theologian, he suggests that forgiveness, get this, is not forgetting, but remembering in a new way. The remembering in a new way. Regardless of how you and I define forgiveness, the one thing most of us, I suspect, can agree upon is that it's incredibly difficult to practice. It does not come naturally. Ultimately, forgiveness is a God thing not a human thing. You and I tend to withhold forgiveness and place conditions on forgiveness. It must be earned, or so we think. One of the most extraordinary examples of forgiveness that I personally had ever witnessed, have ever witnessed, was provided by the Bowman family in St. Petersburg, Florida almost 25, 30 years ago, their daughter, Margaret, was murdered by Ted Bundy while she was a student at Florida State University. They were members of my congregation. It was an outrageous, horrific crime and a devastating loss. The Bowman family were very, very active in our congregation. And from the very beginning, they steadfastly offered forgiveness. They were absolutely consistent and vocal about their forgiveness of Ted Bundy, despite the protests of many of their friends and congregants. The mother Marion said, and I'll never forget her words, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially she said this, I have to forgive. I have to release and let go of my rage and my revenge. If I don't, I'll be chained to Ted Bundy the rest of my life. God has given me the reason and the strength to forgive. Extraordinary. You can almost hear the familiar words of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In our gospel today, Peter tries to get a handle on this practice of forgiveness. And he suggests to Jesus that we might forgive seven times, which really seems quite generous, especially considering the text here which has no mention of the offending party being contrite or a bit repentant. 
Jesus surprises Peter when he says, no, Peter, not seven times, but 77 times. In Scripture, 70, the number 70, is associated with completeness, forever, unbounded, always. Not conditional, not how we feel, not whether they earned it, not whether they deserve it, always. Always forgiving. The difference between Peter's number and Jesus' number goes far beyond arithmetic. It has to do with a radical call to be forgiven and forgiving always. The message is forgiveness is God's character in our calling. How difficult it is for us to say and to mean the three simple words, I forgive you. Given the current climate in our country of anger and fear, and our struggle to engage in open dialogue and civil conversation, perhaps it's more important than ever for us to cultivate some spirit of forgiveness. There's something deep inside each of us that seems to resist forgiving. If offended or injured, most of us are consumed with thoughts of retribution, vengeance, justice, fairness, law. Sort of tongue in cheek here. At the very least, some of us might consider calling Frank Azar the strong arm to pursue legal action. Just imagine, just imagine for most of us, when we first hear the words, we're not even going to begin to offer forgiveness until we hear the words, I am sorry. If the offender does not earn our forgiveness, deserve our forgiveness, ask for our forgiveness, we resist forgiving. Can you recognize how judgmental and egocentric that is? That unforgiving spirit? Who are we to judge if you deserve my forgiveness? But we place conditions on it. <clears throat> Jesus makes it clear in today's gospel that we're always to forgive. We don't have the burden to figure it out whether we should or not. That decision's already been made. We are to forgive. And not only for the sake of the offender, but for our own sake as well. Consider the heavy cost of the unforgiving spirit. When you and I cling to an unforgiving spirit, we become more and more alienated, bitter, and isolated. We spend our time plotting revenge. We become consumed by the offense and the offender. The unforgiving spirit is a corrosive that eats away at our insides, and we lose our health, our freedom, and our peace. Psychologists tell us that the person that we find most difficult to forgive is ourselves. The unforgiving spirit is very costly. A six-year-old little boy came running out of the Sunday school class exuberant, bursting with excitement. He had just learned that God would give everyone a heart of sponge and remove the heart of rock. He described in detail what happened when he poured water over a rock and then poured water over a heart-shaped sponge in his Sunday school class. This graphic lesson was from the 36th chapter of Ezekiel, and some of you will remember that that passage has God removing the heart of stone in humans 
and replacing it with a heart of flesh. On the way home, this little boy and his brother got into a fight. And he got very, very angry and was crying. And his mother asked, what happened? And the little boy said, I hate him. I'll never forgive him. And then he paused. And the little boy said, I guess I need God to take that rock out and give me one of those sponges. God's will for you and me is the abundant life, a life of love and health and joy and peace. Being forgiven and forgiving provides the foundation for that abundant life. And so today, we join that six-year-old little boy and pray that the Lord might create in each of us a clean heart, and even more, that the Lord would remove that rock and replace it with a sponge. Amen.